Hey guys, we've got a real treat for you today. Traveled all the way to Florida. Uh, we've got the official Strongman Games and I reached out to Julius because he is the world record holder in bench press as of now. 335 kilos, is that yeah. right? Yeah. What's that in pounds? 739.6 pounds. Is that it? That's it. That's it. <laughs> 739 pounds. That is heavy. Julius is flying from Kentucky, very kind of him. It's like three and a half hour flight, you're staying for a few days, yeah. watching the official Strongman Games. Julius actually, actually wants to get into Strongman as well. I mean, look at the size of the guy, he'll do very well with, with no training whatsoever, but you know, the world record bench, that transfers over to sort of overhead stuff very well, so you no doubt that your shoulder strength is phenomenal. <clears throat> You've sort of took a step back from the squatting and the, and the deadlifting, and why, why is that? Uh, simply because I wanted to focus solely on uh, bench press. Yeah. So uh, I often, whenever I, I squatted a lot, um, just the the, head, the weight being so heavy, it just irritated my shoulders. Yeah. Um, and plus, you know, a, a lot of volume in bench, and it just for me at the time, what I had going on outside of the gym was just too much. Yeah. So we just dialed it back. And yeah. so, so on top of all this, how, how how do you? What's your career? Like, what's your income? So um, I work for a, a recovery program that helps men and women uh, combat drugs and alcohol. Um, I went through it myself yeah. about seven years ago, and that's where like I found my love for powerlifting. Very, very commendable. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a nice, nice job to have. I appreciate it. No, it is. It is a nice job to have. So you're 32 years of age. Yes. And you only started lifting five, five and a half years ago. Five and a half years ago. So he he started lifting pretty much ju just before I, the sort of age I won the world's strongest man. Um, so pretty crazy. How come you started so late? Uh, well, uh, so from a teenager on up until, you know, about the age of 25, uh, just in a lifestyle just full of, you know, crime and drugs and mm -hmm. just, you know, a lot of just madness. So um, I finally got to a place to where um, ultimately I got in trouble and it was time for a change. I had a daughter. She was getting ready to turn one and, you know, one, one of the, the key things that like stood out to me was on my daughter's first birthday, um, we had a visit and I was actually uh, behind bars. Oh. So we had a visitation and just seeing her behind the glass and finally felt um, like the full weight of my actions and everything that I've done. So yeah. I realized there was a need for change and um, I did it. So in the process started. And weightlifting became a part of that yeah. process, that, yeah. that sort of void filler. Yeah, so it was like uh, just working a full-time job and dealing with life in general. Yeah. Um, it was just, it was too much. So used to, I would run or I would supplement with something else, drugs or whatever. Yeah. So uh, I found that coming home every day when I got off work and just lifting weights made me feel better. Yeah. And you know, before long I realized like, man, I'm getting really strong. And <laughs> it just went from there and it just kept progressing over time, you know, yeah. so. Um, it's crazy. It's what brings me here today. So. It's crazy, man. For me, bench pressing has just been something that's like a side quest for World's Strongest Man. The most I've ever benched is 285 in a contest when it, back in 2014. I used to train uh, bench every week, super heavy for World's Strongest Man. The, one of my best sets I ever did was 265 kilo for a set of six and I put it back and walked away. I, I watched it multiple times. And there's no, for me, there was no reason to do a max bench because it was never in a strongman contest. And it's super dangerous. You know, when, you, when you're doing these, you know yourself, how many tears and niggles you get. Yeah. You know, training for the world's strongest man, if I tear a peck off, that's it, my career's over. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not naive enough to say I can do the world record bench. I need a good solid year of full-time commitment to yeah. do this because I know what it takes. I know what world records take. And you've obviously put the work in. So I guess I, I'm here today to learn from you. And, I'm here uh, to learn from you. <laughs> <laughs> Although we can help each other out a little bit. So how would you start? We've got an empty so, bar? Yeah, so typically I start out with bands, just a little stretching. Mm -hmm. uh, then I go into, uh, I, I start out with 135. But uh, so the whole, 
I guess what put me in this position is being very strategic about my workouts mm -hmm. and how I warm up um, leading up to um, again stretching and, and recovery so my like my program my training block is, is scheduled out by weeks but the biggest I guess the biggest thing that, that, that I embrace is recovery man I make sure that if so typically I have four days that I have to complete in a week but sometimes those four days might run over nine to 13 days almost yes. two weeks nice. simply because if, if I feel that I need to rest and get the proper amount of recovery time in that I'll, I'll just stay away I won't oh, even okay. touch a weight so I'm huge on accessories yeah accessories are what fill in the gaps where I mean like you're only gonna get so far if you bench all the time right yeah it's only gonna take you so far so what the accessories do is they fill in the gaps the weaknesses that you have um, you know in certain areas so if I'm having a sticking point off the chest for me um, that would be back yeah. so um, and if you're having a problem with locking out it will be a tricep issue right, okay. so we really um, we really attack those uh, issues uh, like like I mean when it comes to back I do at least 10 different back variations per per week I mean, I've heard it loads of times. You want a big bench, get a big back. Get a big back. Yeah. yeah so I'm four, right, right now. I'm 440. 440 40. pounds. So what would that be like? 200 and 40, 200 kilos. 200 kilos. Is it? Yeah. So <laughs> to put this in perspective, when I was at my biggest, and I mean my absolute peak, I was 433 pounds. Uh, how tall are you, Julius? Six three. Six three. <laughs> So this, that's incredible. Same height, just just the same way, but like, that, I mean, that's pretty much what I look like <laughs> two years ago. And I'm, you know, standing side by side. That, this is me two years ago. I mean, obviously the, the skin color is a bit different, but <laughs> <laughs> as you can see, like how much weight I have dropped in two years. That's uh, ludicrous. Oh yes, yeah. I'm gonna get there. So whenever I set up, I, I really like. I don't. I don't really know. As far as your setup, do you keep your feet behind your knees when you set up? Try to, yeah. Try to keep your yeah, feet yeah. behind your knees. So I'm, I'm a complete nobody on bench. Oh, uh, no, not really. Like, people know. People yeah, yeah. know. <laughs> so, so keeping your feet behind your knees is what's going to help generate more leg drive. Okay. So as I'm, as I'm getting ready to lift, even when the, bar, when the bar is coming off the rack, I'm already flexing my quads already. So yeah, everything's okay. going to be tight. Yeah. Retracting my shoulder blades. So what do you mean, pinching them? Pinching together? my shoulder blades. Yeah. And I very rarely do uh, self self lift offs. So past anything past three fifteen, I don't I don't do self lift offs. Is that to um, maintain tightness? Maintain tightness. Ah yeah, because obviously when you're lifting off, you obviously uh, yeah when you lose up, that lose that scapula. Yeah, sort you take of. yourself out of the group. Of course. Okay, that makes sense. How do you work out the width for your grip? So I go pinky on the ring. Pinky on the ring? That's pinky quite narrow, isn't it? No, that's per I mean, it's just perfect for me. Is so. it? I'm, I'm usually sort of middle finger on the ring. Middle finger on the ring. Yeah. Well, right. The wider you go is going to be more, I guess, I guess chest. Yeah. So you, I suppose you're quite tricep dominant then. Yes, I am. So as you're, as you're driving when the bar is at the bottom, and as you're getting ready to drive, you want to, the, the, the thought process behind it is you want to drive your heels through the floor. Even though your heels are not touching the floor. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like it yeah. should push you up so the you're bench. you're almost creating that arch. Yes. On the press. So that should drive you like you're going to slide all the way up the bench. You, you're using, right. but you're using so much leg drive. Okay. So the bar travel path should be almost like a exaggerated J. Yeah. Like you're almost going back to the rack. Um, I don't know if you knew that or not. I just noticed that. So you're sort of hitting the middle bottom of your pack here, mm -hmm. and then when you press, it's like doing a little U on that last yeah. bit. Yeah, so probably like the last three or four inches, I'm starting to drive it back. Right. Just kinda... You know, it's actually more about like when you're pressing, you know, so like if you if you finish out here, like over your sternum, you're kind of supporting all the weight over your forearms. It's about getting, you know, back here, yeah. then you get your triceps, shoulders, and you like making that full. Last right bit's here. like activating the triceps in effect. Right, right, right. Yeah, that last press up. Right, right, okay. So you do this, uh, you do this thing where you get in position. So you're here, and your feet are sort of 90 degree. Mm -hmm. 
And then you pull yourself down? Yeah, I pull myself down. So. So. There you go. And then you just, as you do yep. that, you squeeze your scapula. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, at the bottom of the lift, you want to, um, thought process is driving your heels through the floor. Yeah. Even though they may not touch. Yes, I know what you mean. And it's going to feel foreign. <laughs> yeah, it does. But once you get in the groove of it, I mean, you'll just pick it up. It, I mean, you know, so using utilizing leg drive has been night and day difference in my bench. So it's just, it, and again, it's a process. It's just something that you got to continue to do, even starting from with 135, starting with the lightest weight. Mm -hmm. Two, three. There's been many times where I've brought, as I'm coming back up with the weight, I've hit the racks yeah, coming so up. So sure that's I want to make sure, yeah, that's eliminated. Engage your quads. Ready? One. Does that feel good? Do you hold your breath when you do your sets? No, I don't. I mean, I don't even know. I, n I never even thought about it. So, probably. I, th I think I do, for the most part. But yeah, I do that for everything. Yeah. Hold my breath throughout the whole set if I can, so I didn't take a breath for that five reps. <laughs> I've always done that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is the biggest I've ever been. And you're still climbing? Still climbing. Well, no, I mean, I really, I, I fluctuate between 440, 445. Yeah. Uh, my last meet, I was at 444, so it was like 202 kilos or something like that. Is that right? That sounded about right, wasn't it? Was that how much? I was about 444 pounds. My last meet, yeah, it's something like that. I mean, 450 pounds is like a, a very peak Brian Shaw, <laughs> who's six foot eight. You know, so um, so the world record is 335 kilo. Loop very comfortable. Yeah, it, it, it was. It was. It was. Very, I mean, so I knew it. Like whenever I was sitting in the back, usually I got my headphones in. I'm trying to get in the zone, but I have my headphones out, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm like, it's time. I, I'm, I'm talking to myself literally, and people are walking by, like just like looking at me, and I'm just, I'm just so much in the zone. Like I could feel it. I knew it was time. You know, so. Uh, whenever I hit the platform, it was it was all business, man. So, what do you on that day? What do you think you were capable of? I, I was ready. Like I was so fired up, I was ready to go 660, 670. And Josh was like, "Look, your adrenaline's pumping. Like you need to. There's emotion. Your emotions are running high. You need to just stop." Yeah. Because I mean, I was so pumped up. I didn't know I could have I could have strained a pack. I could have done anything, and I wouldn't even have known simply because I'm just so 760. You mean? What I say, 760, 770, somewhere between there is what I yeah. felt like I had in me. So they're putting their limitations on you. Yes, exactly. So sometimes yeah. you just got to block that out, and that's. Uh, but some are good, like some people telling me, and I like I don't ignore it. They're like, look, you can't, you're not going to be able to function like this. Like you're going to die if you continue to go at this rate. And I'm just like, you know, you're right. I, I can't argue with that, you know. Yeah. So um, I'm just in position where. I need to hurry up and not hurry up, but I need to have an end date and say this is it, and then I'm going to transition uh, to strong and I'm going to lose about you know 60, 75 pounds, and yeah. hopefully. Would that make you about 4, 430 still? <laughs> 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 When you get older, you know, I got to 19, and I, I made the statement, like, I'm going to win the World's Strongest Man, put it on my social media. What I made sure happen is, is exactly what I said I was yeah. going to do. It's, it's backing up your bullshit. <laughs> it's standing there with that big golden trophy, with that big smirk on your face. And as they say, kill them with success, yeah. but bury them with a smile. Yeah, and that's yeah. exactly what I fucking yeah. did. Like, have you got any training partners? Because, like, keeping up with you is... I Impossible. Train, I train alone, man. Yeah. Uh, so I, I have, I, I had a, a training partner, but his work schedule, are, well, they don't line up. So yeah. I don't feel safe working up to anything yeah. above this just because of uh, the platform. Okay. So, I mean, if you want, we can, we can do some reps, but the big thing, I guess, is I, like I was gonna go for a PR today, but I just don't, uh, yeah. not not, not. I don't feel comfortable. That's with, fine. Uh, Was it the bench not right? It's not. So like it's rolling back. You know the weight's rolling yeah. back. I can feel it shifting in my hands whenever yeah. I get the weight. So. Um, See, this is stuff. This is stuff I wouldn't know about. Just yeah. like uh, to me, a bench is a bench. But 
I suppose when you get more experience, you, you learn what's good and what's not. For me, everything matters. Like, this was a big deal. I'm like, man, I get to hit a, a PR in front of Eddie. Yeah. You know, and I'm just like, now just looking at it, I mean, right now it's just, it's it's not, you know, I want to be able to live, to, to, to lift another day, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, for sure, got it. Fine. We can do what? some AMRAP sets or a couple more. Uh, do you want to do, uh, do you ever do incline bench? No, but I mean, I'm, I'm up for whatever. Let's do it. We can do some incline. Yeah, very Quite similar to Brian Carroll, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, based off percentages, but we work up to a top set. Then we would drop down to a low percentage and get a lot of volume in. So well, okay. I might drop down to maybe like 545, uh, put some bands on and maybe do like four sets of four, four sets of five. Okay, so work up to a high, like a high, high weight rep? Yeah, so a higher percentage as far as how much weight I'm lifting, and then we'll go from there, uh, we'll drop down to speed, get some more volume in uh, at a lower, a lower weight. Then I'll go into uh, every, every single um, training day, I do some type of back variation. Yeah. Uh, then we'll, we'll hit triceps again and then we'll do some type of chest accessory. Oh, okay. So like flies or cable flies, dumbbell flies or whatever. So just like uh, seeing how many I can pump out 315 for. Okay. Turn it into a little comp? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Alright, so you're going to go as ready as you can right now? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 15, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, Burning too much? Good gosh. That was good. 22 reps. <laughs> I don't think I've done an incline bench in like six months, eight months. And he doesn't even train it. Okay. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> Come on. 18. Come on. Come on. 18. Come on. Oh. That's a nice pump on that does. That's what I'm saying. Jesus. <laughs> you, you never bench incline. Never. Never. So that's. So he doesn't even train that and he still beat me. That's fair. Wife's fair. Still, you got a 500 kg uh, deadlift like I got. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't dispute that. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to some accessory work. We're going to okay. crank them out. Yeah. Um, typically, when it comes to accessories like tricep extension or um, dumbbell extensions, I like to keep it between four to six, uh, four to six uh, sets and anywhere from 12 to 16 reps. Okay. So, heavy as, as I can stand it. Sometimes, you know, if I'm feeling <coughs> froggy, I'll, I'll crank it up even more. I might do a few AMRAP sets at the end. He, uh, you, you forgot to do a warm-up set. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> Straight to the rack. So how many was that? Twelve? Uh, I did sixteen, but we can start 16. with twelve. <laughs> so I like to do this thing where I, where I drop the weight a little bit, and we go for five minutes straight, and 
So what you do is you'll do eight reps, then rest 15 seconds. Okay. Then I'll go and we'll just rotate back and forth for five minutes. So just keep doing back, just keep doing yeah, reps gonna, five yeah. minutes. So we'll do eight reps, then you go. Okay. I'll do eight reps, then you go. Okay. Eight reps and then we'll go lighter weight, but towards the end it's gonna smoke us out. Yeah. But this is the stuff that I that I do um, to get to where I'm at today, you know, just and actually, this is something that Josh does all the time. I train with Josh Bryant. So uh, this is good for sort of getting blood through the muscle, yes. helping the recovery process. Yep. It so, hurts, but it's, yeah. <laughs> the recovery process helps. Yeah. Five minutes yet? <laughs> what we done? Like thirty seconds? Uh, thirty seconds. Yep. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look forward to it. <laughs> it's it's a good thing. It's it's a good sore. It's like bum sacks. It's a good <sighs> it's a good sore. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Two minutes? minutes yep. We got it. Easy. We'll just make the last set of MRAP set. Okay. I promise I'm not trying to kill you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. Boy, I gotta get a nice arm pump. Four fifty, okay. Go ahead, get him. Sort him out. Come on. Five. I'm gonna do an M rep set. Come on. Four. Come on. Oh. 55 and 55. They say that for every push movement, there should be two pull movements. Two pull. Two pull movements, okay. meaning we bench today, then I should be doing two different types of back accessories. So, uh, but really I do along the lines of maybe two to two to four. I mean, th three to four, uh, yeah, don't, don't quote me on that one. <laughs> three to four uh, back variations. Oh, that, that's nuts because, I mean, me, me as a strong man, I've always done like a day of legs, a day of chest, a day of back, a day of shoulders. Uh, and even with the deadlift, I would just deadlift and then do my accessories on the same day, once, once a week, that was it. So, Julius has got this method from his coach where for every push, you just two pulls. And it kind of makes sense because you need those stabilizing muscles in the back to sort of get you in that position to push the forward. Um, so again, I, you know, 31 years of age, the career I've had that ever been achieved, still learning. Great work, bro. Nice, man. Nice. Smoke, how you feel? Yeah, good. Okay. Good, so that, is, that, is that all you do, you do? I mean, we'll go, we can do a, a still another like, Flies on the uh, yeah. pec deck. Yeah, let's do and that. Then I'm done. Cool. So it's amazing, like such. I mean, when I train chess, I train chess for like three hours once a week. But obviously, your program consists of sort of like an hour and a half, two hours, pretty much every, like four, four times a week. 
all focused on bench. Yeah, so I mean, pushing so and pulling. I do have leg days, uh, but for the most part, we uh, we cater two days out of the week to bench, but also we incorporate other variations such as back, yes. simply because it, it all works together. Yeah. So if you think about it, if you're benching, you're using your back. Yes, of course. So we train those accessories after we get done with the top set. So again, we work up to a higher percentage, drop down to you know lower percentage, uh, get some volume in, then we'll go into all the accessories that we lifted for. So we'll hit chest again as far as like, you know, like I said, pec deck cable flies, then we'll go into triceps, such as we did tricep extension. Then uh, we do some type of back variation. So, but that neutral grip, about shoulder width apart, is probably one of my favorite favorite back accessories. I just feel like it targets um, my lats more, and I believe that's why I'm so explosive off, off my yeah. chest. So you, you use your lats almost yeah, to get I'm that explosion. My lat, yeah. So from 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 the chest to 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 about almost lockout range. That's that's all to me that I feel like I'm using my lats more. Oh, okay. You know, once I we increased the volume in my back, my bench started going up because I would always have my sticking point will be about right here. Yeah. But you know, um, which was partly my tricep, just a weakness in my triceps. But because I was so explosive off the chest, we yeah. just grinded right through it. You know, so yeah. you just have to find a way to exploit whatever your weakness is. Yeah. So those techniques you give me with the arching, like little arch in the back, the shoulders tight. So how would you activate your lats? Was it just a, a natural thing? So when you? you squeeze, I mean, I guess whenever you retract your your back, you're already activating. But as you're coming down, as you're as you're as you're bringing the weight down, you're pulling to the chest and you're loading up like a rubber okay. band. So you're also pull, pulling your arms in against your yeah, lats. Yeah. Yeah. So. More along the lines of having your elbows tucked at like a 45, I guess. Yeah. And you're, as you're pulling the weight down, you're loading up to, boom, explode okay. at the bottom of the, does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. So most people, they flare their elbows out. Yes. You're disengaging your lats. Yeah. But when you tuck them, you're engaging them. So think about I think it. I'm a bit Football flare. players. Yeah, I'm a flare. So I need to sort of yeah. try and keep my elbows tight, sort of keep it on the triceps yeah. more, mm -hmm. more on the lats. So, I mean, you think about it, football players, whenever football players explode, they don't explode like this. Yeah. They explode from here. Yeah. That's where we generate the most power. Makes sense. You had any bad injuries yet? The box jump, did you see the box jump? No, what was that? You never seen the box jump. No, what did you do? <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, what, what weight were you then? 440. So you're 440, full on, boom. Even, I mean, look at the camera shake. Yeah. The ca true. Even the cameraman is just like, <laughs> -doo -doo -doo. that is incredible. So what, what did that, did that hurt your back or what? Oh yeah, it set me back for about six months. Right after that lift, I hit a, uh, right before that lift is whenever I hit seven, 705. Right. So I got into the 700 pound club. I was just sitting down, hanging out with some, some, some of my friends, and I seen a high school kid over there doing box jumps. Yeah. I played basketball in high school, so uh, I used to be really athletic. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm just watching, I'm like, we used to do those in basketball practice. I can do it right now. And they were like, And then, and then you woke up No, you back. shouldn't. They're like, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> no, you shouldn't do that. I'm like, what do you mean, no, I shouldn't? I just, <laughs> I just hit 705 on a bench press. That's I can it. do this. And uh, it didn't turn out in my favor. Like it was bad. Like I thought my uh, career was over uh, just because it jacked my shoulder up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I still uh, like I have a knot on the top of my shoulder from my AC joint. Um, but took some time off, recovered, and you know I'm back. Yeah. But I, I thought it was seriously. I thought it was so, over, bro. No more box jumps. No, no more. No. Yeah, me when and, I see a box jump, I go the opposite me, direction. Me and Brian were doing them a few weeks back in uh, Los Angeles, and I daren't go any higher than like that. Yeah, I see. Just because it's stuck yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> On stage. What, bodybuilding? Yeah. I, I actually quite fancy that in the not so distant future. Bit of a That's bodybuilding awesome. cup, yeah. Well, people always, because I always like go to Olympia and stuff, and people, like, man, when are you going to compete? Like, just give me, I'm like 76 months out. <laughs> so, right, guys, we're absolutely an amazing session with Julius Maddox. Um, 
He said the bench wasn't that good for him today, so uh, we didn't push the boundaries too much, but as you can see, he was doing 225, 220 kilos, like just under 500 pounds. Yeah. I mean, he was pressing them like they were nothing, so uh, you can evidently see the powers there. We had a little bit of a comp on the incline, and then we did uh, some five minute superset on the triceps and a, a finisher, and what's called an AMRAP. Yeah, I'm wrapped pretty I'm much. Rap. Never heard that before. Like the, I think it's like the five minute gauntlet. Yeah, the gauntlet. Okay. Whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> and then we finished off on flies, just a nice stretch, get some blood through the muscles. I actually feel pretty good. I, I, you know, I would train chest for three hours. All I would do would be flat bench, incline bench, dumbbells, pet deck, uh, and then finish off with triceps. That'd take me about two and a half, three hours. What time is it now? 11. I mean, we've done, is it 12? Five to 12. Is that right? Five to eleven. So we're in two hours. That's uh, and I feel a lot blast, of work done. Yeah. Feel blasted. Like I've got a lot of work in. Uh, it's completely. It's it's quite eye opening. The, the the program you're doing. It's just like a few chest exercises, then a few back exercises, and the two two work quite well. I actually yeah. feel quite sort of in line. So you feel quite quite powerful. Give it two days. Give it two days, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 nothing's nothing's torn. So, I mean, Julius, mate, your program is quite unique. Who does your programming? So, uh, about a guy by the name of Josh Bryant, uh, his at name is Jailhouse Strong for, on IG. But, uh, yeah, he's just, I mean, he brings a whole another level to the game. Yeah. Uh, it's just very strategic about uh, the programming and, you know, how we, you know, conduct ourselves. To, so, we're not uh, prone to injury and things yeah. like that. So, we're just... He's just very smart about how we go about attacking our program. Right, cool. Well, I'm, I'm for sure going to hit him up, definitely. Um, yeah, and you're going for the 800 pound bench? Going for the 800 pound bench. How are you feeling? How, how far off are you? Uh, I feel right now, if I could say, it'd be 771 right now, somewhere around there. So that's what, about 355, 355 kilos, something like that. That's right. <laughs> just don't know why you bother. Really. Yeah, not, you know, so. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I deadlift just just as much. Yeah. So uh, I'm about mm, 600 kilogram deadlift. Okay. Uh, 600 pounds, you mean? No, 600 kilogram. Deadlift? Yeah. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'll just go and fucking hang myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Well, uh, if you need any help with your deadlift, mate, then hit me up. I can, I can sort you out with the programming for that. And. Uh, it's been a pleasure, man. Pleasure. Man. Thank you very Appreciate much. You. Right, guys, please go and check out Julius Maddox on YouTube. Please subscribe to the channel. This guy is going for an 800 pound bench, so do not miss that. That's, that's a channel worth following because if he hits that, I don't think there's going to be another man in history for a long, long time that's going to do an 800 pound bench. So that's going to be a, a, a phenomenon to see. But uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Big love the beast. Stay hydrated. See you later.